They must have freedom. He said, no slavery anymore here. I will not be mastered by anything. Meaning, sin will not enslave me anymore. <laughs> Sexual immorality. He raises it, somebody. He raises it. And he'd rather, he'd rather, you're telling them, he'd rather, isn't you? Because sexual sin has brought down the church. He'd rather, he had rather raise it. I am very happy with this scripture. You're telling them, you see that? Okay. Hmm? Food for the stomach, and the stomach for food. But God will destroy them both. Hallelujah. Somebody, somebody listen. He says that when it comes to the matter of my people and sexual sin as a red flag, for God to dwell, and no, no, for God to dwell. Hallelujah. Then he says, very clearly he says food for the stomach I'm destroying both what is he talking about there a third characteristic third one somebody he says my people is a church that fasts Hallelujah. Let me ask you, church. He will destroy both. He promised. He must. Because he must fulfill this word. He must. Let me ask you one thing. In your worship, in your salvation, Hallelujah. Coming in in the morning, Sunday, walking. Sitting here beautifully. And we love it. We love this church. We love what we're doing here. No doubt about that. No question about that. We come very early. But he's asking. In your worship, have you really fasted? Because the third, it was the third or fourth? Third. third. Okay, whichever number. He said fasting. It's fourth, yes. And then he comes and says, he comes back. And he says, now listen to me. I want to say this on a low tone. <laughs> you, you, you know, he brings them and then he takes them. Eh? I want to say this. He's saying sexual sin. Then he's saying, eating food, destruction. What is the message? In other words, he's saying that be careful with the flesh. Be careful. I thank the ones who are writing because I will never teach. It's a privilege even for me. I will never ever teach. You will always fall back to it. But if you're fooling around just looking, oh, you regret. Because talking here is the mighty prophet of the Lord. Yes. You know that. Yes. Even the sacrifice of time to do this. Oh. Oh. I know what heaven beholds not right now. Yeah? It's an investment. And he says, for God to dwell among you, watch out on food. Food feeds the sinful desires of the flesh. Sexual sin. We are still on the way to discover as a church, as a community, as a congregation, an assembly of God. Are we really his people? And then 
what does it take for him to dwell? So we saw sexual sin, stop sign. Food and excessive living, stop. The flesh. But he says, he says, by, he says, but God will destroy both. The body is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord. And the Lord for the body. By his power, God raised the Lord from the dead. And he will raise us also. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ himself? Himself? You see the kind of reading? Eh? Himself? I like you guys for buying white shirts. The, the whole thing in this ministry is white shirts, right? Only white shirts, please. And they're cheap, you can afford them. I like you for buying white shirts. Very powerful. Only white shirts. Very powerful. White shirts, please. Yes, ever since I told you, like, Bishop is quite powerful. Yeah. Only white shirts. They're very cheap. They're about 1,099 or whatever. 900 or whatever. And when you buy four, they can take you, you know? White shirts are powerful. Yes. Someone watching that DVD will be shocked. <laughs> White shirts again. <laughs> 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 no, you know, you know, when the cow is fighting with another cow in the busy war, then it starts to eat some grass here. <laughs> they call it displacement activity. Replacement activity in psychological terms. They call it uh, compensatory behavior. There's too much distress. Side a little bit. You see that? Yeah. It's good to make it light and happy, right? Yeah. Otherwise, if it's weeping, people can weep here. They're fasting, right? But nobody feels the fast, right? Yeah. Nobody. I don't feel it. Nobody feels it. You should never feel it. Because the Lord gave you a long time to eat. Yes. Let's get the cancers out, the hypertension, cholesterols, burnt out, thrown out, right? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So we can be healthy, not visiting doctors, right? Mm -hmm. Clean teeth during this time, right? With Listerine, right? Yes, and toothbrush, toothpaste, rather. He says, Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ himself? Shall I then take the members of Christ and unite with a prostitute? Somebody did not hear me. Unite. And unite with a prostitute. Later, I will explain to you the prostitutes of Corinth, what they did. The prostitutes in Corinth, why the Lord brought it here? They worshipped a God called Aphrodite, the God of love and sex. So when he says prostitution, he means both immorality and idolatry. Does somebody hear me? Hey, why are people so quiet like that? You scare me. <laughs> no, you say you're, you're taking that sharp corner. <laughs> okay. The prostitutes of Corinth, they worship the god of Aphrodite. Aphrodite, if you want. And that was an idol Greek god, the god of love and sex, sexual immorality. So when he says, you cannot combine my people. My people does not combine. In other words, immorality, idolatry. He's killing two birds with one stone. Did you hear the language there? No combining. Kuchanganya akuna. Asemai bwana. He says, Never. I was kaniata. He says, Do you not know that he who unites himself with the prostitutes is one with her? Hallelujah. 
Then he says, Huh? Do you not know he is one with her, with, with her in the body? He says, For it is said, the two will become one flesh. But he who unites himself with the Lord is one with him in spirit. Verse 18, somebody. He says, flee from sexual immorality. Hallelujah. Then he comes forth. He comes the high street again. He says, I want, I, I want to talk about this now. Did you hear the language? Eh? I want to talk about this now. I want to talk about this now, precious people. This is big. This is not small because he's saying that when it comes to immorality, it's double. It's both adultery and idolatry. But then, when he now comes to his people, the instruction is clear. He says, flee from immorality. He does not say, handle it. Try to deal with it. Avoid it. Try to block it. He said, run away. Run away, somebody. Flee. Have you run away from immorality? He threw on that question and he came back. All other sins a man commits are outside his body. But he who sins sexually sins against his own body. Do you not know that your, bodies, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? Where? You must come back to the street. You must. If you're a real preacher, you must be out of there now. Yes. Those are two big things to say. Yes. You cannot let it go, right? Yes. Now I get a revelation. Church, I get another revelation. He's saying that my people, that, that he shall dwell among them. But now I understand. He's saying your body is the Holy tabernacle of the Holy Ghost. Ha <laughs> ha. Nobody heard me. So when he says that now the dwelling of God is with man. And he says that God shall dwell among them. Look at what he means. He means that they shall be Holy Ghost filled. Somebody, do you see my people? My people is a Holy Spirit filled church. Point number five. That's number five or number what? Number five. Holy Spirit filled. Oh, huh? somebody. And I said, we love it. We love it so much here. Very much. Worship. I bring you guest preachers here. Bishop comes. We go to the crusades. But precious people. In all that salvation. Are you Holy Spirit filled? Somebody tell me. Are you really filled? Is he dwelling? Now I understand. And he says, You are not your own. Huh? You are bought at a price. Better for, huh? I cannot, I cannot hold this now. Precious people, this is now too much for me. Did somebody hear the kind of language? Please give me a backup. <laughs> because you know I'm shouting from the thorax and the lungs. I cannot take it anymore now. 
He now begins to say bigger things here. <laughs> you understand that? Huh? <laughs> and he's saying that you are not your own. Woman on the Another feature. Number six. He says, my people. My people is a church. My people is a people that comprehend the cross at Calvary. There you go. And he's out of there. I said it. Somebody, I said it. I have said it. You know, he's saying like that. Eh? He said, I said it. However big it is, I've said it. You know. Hmm? He says, the cross they know. And so they know the price of purchase, the price tag. The, the, when you go to the shop, they say price tag. Tag, meaning tagged, tagged, tagged with price, price, price. He say, my people, they know the cross. Let me explain this. He say, they know price tag. How much price tag? They say, Sujila, I'm going to breakfast. Gani? They're beginning to talk. He Canada, he ended up to Mishwa Mungu. He went to Maribu Kichu. I'm going to find you a moto sana. Today he was very strict on us, but we loved it. <laughs> They're now sharing with people after church. He was very strict on us. <laughs> you see that? So when you're preaching it, he's preaching it somewhere else. He's preaching it somewhere else. Uh, so blessed is he that is preaching this message to his own church. Yes. Because if you fool around someone who preach it very beautifully to your church. Oh, yes. You see that? Yes. Bring it to full power and fire yes. to your church. Yes. So that's it. He would just preach it. Hmm? And he's saying price tag. Meaning he knows the price of purchase. So it was so high. He says I do not belong to me. Menunuliwa. Number seven, going by that, he means that my people is a church, a church that is totally covenanted, bonded. She's a bond church, bonded servant. She has no choice. She don't belong to herself. Nothing. Somebody listen to me. Nothing. Nothing. I say nothing. Did you hear that? <laughs> Say nothing. <laughs> she owns nothing. She has been totally purchased. Did you hear the nothing three times there? Yes. <laughs> you understand? She owns nothing. She knows she has been bought. Mimi nime nunuliwa. Nime kombolewa. Ransom paid. If I look at my people now, I see them differently. Because now when I look at them, I see one thing. I see them saying, my old man has been crucified with church, with Christ. <laughs> Sorry about that. With yeah, the church was crucified. I hear now my people saying, my old person has been crucified. And behold, the new creation. Because they know the cross. They know the price. And he says that owing to the price of purchase, owing to the cost of redemption, she must now honor God with her body. That's number eight. My people, somebody listen to me. My people, my people is a church that honors God with her body. Listen to me, church. Listen to me. Every Sunday morning entering here, walking, children, bringing, and it's a good thing. Worshipping here, worshipping, 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 and very well, and we love it. Kneeling down, praying, weeping before the Lord. 
But my question to you is this. In your practice, have you really honored God with your bodies? Well, <laughs> no, this is so-called wake-up message. But let me tell you, I'm going to pray tonight on my knees that he gives you strength and power. Because you cannot do this with human strength. Because you're operating at full throttle from beginning to end. You don't want like this. Hey, nani shika pastor? Nini men pika apa? Nisikia chutuka tu amen pika. No, you don't say that. This is a casual meeting. I want to have fellowship with you people. Life is too tough out there to get this class for, you know. So this is the moment of lightness, you know. When we are fasting so that you may not cry. You see that? <laughs> you understand? <laughs> that you may not cry. <laughs> so the thing is, I have to pray that you get power. Yes. Power you need. Yes, yes you yes. need power. Yes. And I hope that all your pastors come here. You make sure, liars with him, eh? Yes. Because here you are eating, eating. And then you tell them, guys, conference, pastor's conference, I need to talk. <laughs> you understand? <Yes. laughs> and then you give it to them, which is a good thing to do. You can literally give to them. That's how the message goes. Mm -hmm. And you know, he, he, he has fire. Yes. He would do it with fire. He would do it with full fire, yes. full throttle, like everybody else. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying, let some come if they want to come. come yes, if you allow them, please. Come, Are they allowed to? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, thank you. So you see that you need energy for this. Yes. You need strength and preparation for this. This message calls for sanctification. You have to sanctify yourself like three days before the meeting. You cannot touch your wife. You cannot do what, you know, you just drink and eat well. You're drinking and you're eating well. And you are most, mostly in prayer. You said, Nataka, when I begin to explode this thing there, I want when the Lord looks like this, at my people. Hmm? Yes. No, I'm not, I mean, I'm just saying, you can live your life, do what you want. Though. I'm just saying, forget about me though. I know me, I'm a eunuch, but you know, forget about what I say. I'm just a dreamer. You say, it's good. Uh, uh, <laughs> did I hear it right? <laughs> it's good. <laughs> okay, that's good. Uh, sorry? Amen. Because then the, because the power is unbelievable. Because in this message, if you're not careful, you can collapse, you know. <laughs> because the full throat of full lungs. And you have to give it that way because if you come down, you kill their hearts. Mm. Then somebody else will come to your church, eh? Mm. Where? In your absence. <laughs> 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 and when you come back, everybody say, Pastor, you know, you have to, can you allow him to come again? <laughs> you say, eh, shh, don't speak like that. <laughs> Respect people. <laughs> you understand? No, but he's talking about here. Have you seen? Now I am moving it to another level. If you have seen in what I'm doing here, there is a chronology, a system, a systematic. All I'm trying to present to you, precious people, if you have been following very closely what I'm doing here, I'm presenting to you a systematic of God that there is a system that when God speaks about one thing, they are tap, 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 other things downstream. That's what he's talking about here. But I'm talking to you about this. Though. Because there is a systematic, because from one thing leads to the other. Because we were headed to the book. We said, Allah, be, watch it, let us find out what exactly is this. Hmm? Yes. And we came all this way. Because he says, must dwell among them. He says, behold, now the dwelling of God is with man. The tabernacle. Yes. So this is what we're exploring because we want to know what does it take for God to dwell among us? He said, keep away from what? Sexual immorality. Red flag. Red flag. Red flag. So you have nowhere you can run to. Where? <laughs> Someone laughed. <her. laughs> Someone is burning the bushes. Eh? Okay. Hmm? Yeah? He's saying these things here. 
And now, listen to me now. I want to put a little twist onto this. Hey. Can I close the door? No, you cannot close. Okay. So, no. Yes. You cannot close because we need the breeze, whatever. Okay. Whatever the case. Eh? Okay. Will you die? No, no. Okay, you will not die. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to. You know, time is good to know, right? <laughs> but what I'm saying is this. You, you now call them and say, listen to me, somebody. Now, we were headed to the book. And then we found that he must dwell. And so we began to explore what it takes for him to dwell. And we found sexual immorality. And we found that it's double fucked. It's idolatry and immorality. And that's why I say that now where we have reached now I want to put a small twist to this now so I can be able to bring out the key elements. <laughs> you understand now the language there? Yes, yes, yes. Understand? I want to put a small twist to this yes. so I can be able to bring out the key elements. You see? So even the language is rich. Eh? Yes. Yes. yes, it makes them love this, you know? Yes. Hmm? What do I mean by this? He says, it is now the Holy Ghost. That when the Holy Ghost has filled them, now Jehovah dwells. And now they are my people. But I still want to go an extra mile. Do you know the way when you begin to discover things, you cannot stop? You find gold, you say, let us dig some more kilometers. You find oil, let us dig more deeper. There may be more oil here. 20 miles from here. That is me now, you tell them. <laughs> that is me now. Because I still want to find out some smaller aspects. Because he's now saying that the Holy Ghost must, must dwell. So I'm saying, then what does it then take for the Holy Ghost to infill? Because now, not just for God to live, to dwell, but now we are found in the Holy Ghost. What does it now take for the Holy Ghost to fill them? In fill. Somebody turn with me. Right now. Oh, I've left a lot of beautiful things. I've jumped like one. I've jumped one, two, three. Four, five, five major scriptures, and I'm still happy. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So, yeah, I, I will. I will go through them later. I, like I told you, you can always come back. Yes, thank you. So, precious people, turn with me now to Matthew, the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter twenty-four. Oh, no, 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 sorry, I beg your pardon. Matthew chapter 9. We love 24, right? You, you, you are telling them, eh? <laughs> yeah, because you cover yourself. You, you read differently. You say, we love 24, right? I do too. <laughs> Matthew chapter 7. Verse 17. Hey. Matthew chapter 9. <laughs> My head is in the wall, really. I need to calm down. I need to slow down. Matthew chapter 9. But you, you see, that's the beauty because they will correct you. Because you already said. You see that? They will correct you. So don't even worry about that. Because you'll always end up in the right place, right? Matthew chapter 9. Bishop, you want to go wash your mouth a bit? Yes. To refresh you and your face? <laughs> no, 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 don't worry. We have not fasted for a long time. So let us just cut out the cholesterol, the tumors, the everything, right? Dissolves it. You know, fasting purifies. Cholesterol, nini, wakinawambogo, down, eh? Hypertension, quisha. Huh? Yes, it's healthy. And replenish the cerebral spinal fluid, right? So you begin afresh. 
it's like a renewal, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, so important. The Lord knew what he did, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So we cannot feel terrible about it, right? Matthew chapter 9, verse 17. <coughs> He's coming. Okay. Hey, how did I jump the big scriptures? That's amazing. Okay. I'm going to read now. Matthew chapter 9, verse 17. I read now. Can I read? Yes. You, you, you see what it does? I read now. Can I read? Then when they say yes, they say, I begin from 16. You see that? You see that? So, you know, you, 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 have, you have a freedom there, right? You have, you have a space there. He says, no one sews a patch of unshrunken cloth. He means brand new. A patch of unshrunken cloth on an old garment. For the patch will pull away from the garment, making the tear worse. High street again. Precious people, have you heard? When it comes to infilling, to fill them with the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, now he says, Highways Kanihata, that nobody can go to a shop. Muindimbingu Street, Biashara Street, Wherever. And say, cut for me that new cloth I want to put here. It is torn. He said, not possible. Highways Kanyata. When it comes to the infilling of the Holy Spirit. He says, not. Hapa akuna nafasi ya biraka. You understand? <laughs> you understand what he's saying? I'm trying to give you every word so you use these words. You know? yes. <laughs> Before I move on, let me tell you one thing. I see you in Kenya. I see you in Kenya. He said, I see you in Kenya. <laughs> you understand? You are old. Viraka, 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 viraka. He's saying that highway hakuna hata haiwezekani is not possible. Mvua ikija mashimu mashimu mashimu. He said it's not possible like that he says. It cannot work somebody he says. That's on the language. Let's read on and see what he says further on. He says neither do men pour new wine into old wine skins. If they do, the skin will burst and the wine will pour out and the wine skin will be ruined and the wine will be destroyed also. No, they pour new wine into new wine skins and the two are preserved. Eh? <laughs> you tell them, everybody look at me. I must now say this. At this point, I must say this. You tell them. And you'd rather have some drinking water in your pulpit for drinking, right? Yes. Yeah, because here we're fasting. But me, I don't. But you need. So you are fresh, you know? So somebody, listen to this now. This is now absolutely serious. Because he's starting to say. He's <laughs> starting to say. He's starting to say that when it comes to this matter of the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Number one, viraka hakuna hapa. Number two, listen to this. They used to prepare goat skin. Goat skin as the vessels for new wine. Every time there was new harvest, 
The new harvest. Somebody didn't hear me. New harvest. New harvest of what? No, 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 no. Hey, the, the what do you use? Grapes. Thank you very much. New harvest of grapes. They prepared new goat skins. And you see, they're now looking at you. Hey, you people are not looking. They're now looking at you. And you say, you do this, look. The new goat skin, the new wine, from the new grapes, had so much power. It is brewing with much power. It is swelling with much power. You listen to the words, brewing, swelling. It is swelling with much power. It is fermenting with power. It is raising, it is rising up with great power. Because it is new wine. New wine. It is not old. It is new wine. And when they poured in the new wine skin, now you are going to demonstrate to them. The new wine skin. I want to see Dr. Catherine demonstrate that. Yes. In her church. Oh, yeah. That's the day she will be dead meat, right? <laughs> <laughs> she said, no, me, I can't. You do this. You need charisma. Yes, yes, yes. because the Lord has given you authority. Yes. The new wine skin. Somebody look. It will begin to stretch. You are now doing to them this. It's elastic. When the wine swells, it can accommodate. Somebody look, swelling, extending, as required by the new wine. And the wine is preserved. And the skin is preserved. However, the old wine skin has already stretched. Look, Elasticity came already maximum. No more. And when the wine wants to swell, it burst. Only one person can be here. Okay. Yes. Because I know the opportunity cost. I would have written three pages of the magazine and posted on the web. Millions would be reading. And my daughter there, she always posts them on a Facebook with how many? 100 million? 100 million people following it. Excuse me. Yeah, and then plus 50 million on the other Facebook. So total of the two is 150 million, right? you see that? I know the opportunity cost of what I'm doing. Mm. I could reach 100 million. Ah, so kiniangalia andika. Kiniangalia tu hivi. Kana kwamba, what is this crazy one saying? I know what I ought to be doing now. Finishing page one and posting. 100 million. Did somebody hear what I had? Yes. <laughs> the tool for evangelism. Facebook, eh? And they get it from there. They share with other chat rooms, you know. They share with others. So you can imagine the multiplier effect. The gospel is reaching out. Yes. Yeah. Hey. She keeps posting every morning. So he's saying that old wine skin hakuna hapa. <laughs> what is the Lord saying then? Somebody listen to me. Let us read this. The book of Job. That you may understand this. Job 32. Hey, I'm tired. We, we, Bishop, you're right. I may have to break and go. I hate to do this during fasting because I'm forced to break with fluids. You know? I hate to do this. 
because normally it becomes, uh, I like to fast when I'm just alone. No? You say that because every time we're fasting, somehow there's teaching. Eh? Yeah, yeah. The Lord has made a pattern like that, right? Yeah. And then we're always breaking with fluid. Yeah. Sorry? Mm. So it's very important to break. Eh? Yeah. It's, it's surely important to break. I'm playing with your hearts, right? <laughs> yeah, but what I'm saying is that normally when we fast, we don't do this. Because this is a heavy expenditure. Yeah. yeah, and that we have a lot of things there. You need to be sane, talking to some people here also. Um, and strong. Yes. So now everything's all right? So what he's saying, that the book of Job, chapter 32, what is he saying about the new wine? And then I'll come to the bottom of the issue. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> yeah, because you always have to assure them that you will summarize for them. You understand? Job 32, verse 17. Job 32 verse, I have not even read Amplified, that's not right. Job 32 verse 17, he says, huh? Can I read? Yes, yes. Yes. Verse, <laughs> 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 oh, Ati 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 Mushiriki said, yes, pastor, do it, please. <laughs> so, so that is it. So, so Job chapter 32, Job chapter 32, verse 17, but I'll begin from verse 16. I begin from verse 16. You have that freedom, you see that? So nobody will take you to court for saying 17 and you start at 16. He says, Must I wait now that they are silent? Now that they stand there with no reply? He says, Must I wait? Ndangoja patalini? He's saying, <laughs> Why wait? <laughs> <laughs> verse 17 I too will have my say I too will tell what I know huh? <laughs> wait, wait. Yeah, hey, you're coming up to the wine eh? hmm? Hmm? Huh? for I am full of words and the spirit within me compels me inside I am like Bottled up wine. Yeah, do you begin to understand? Mm. Like new wine skins ready to burst. Hey, where, where? Yeah. I must speak and find relief. I'm full of pressure, he says. Eh? I must open my lips and reply. Yeah. I will show partiality to no man, to no one. Nor will I flatter any man. Sorry about that. Then you come. Precious people. This is very serious. Now, he's saying that the new wine, in the new wine skin, bottled up. Look, pressure. Look, pressure. You understand? He gives you pressure. He says, no wonder he says, Hakuna viraka hapa. Ukiweka viraka, itapasuka. No patching here. Because he says, bottled up with pressure. And now the pressure, I must say. I must have my say now. He says, my people. Is the church bottled up new wine skins with new wines, new grapes, and full of pressure? They want to say, they want to say what they know. <laughs> Did somebody hear that? Nobody heard me. You meet him in the class with fellow students, he say, Are you aware it's repentance and this is the hour of the latter anointing? And right now the church is preparing. Are you ready for the rapture? You know, you people, we need to prepare for rapture. You know, when we get born again, it gives us good quality in university here. And at times now, if you look at the life of the other people and the life of the Christians, you just make a choice for yourself that this is good life. What? They are full of pressure. They always want to say. Yes. Did you understand them? Yes. How is Kujamaza? Yes. That 
is my people. Yes. Bottled up. Full of pressure. Say, must I wait for how long? I want to say, you understand? What I know, you understand? You people, leave me alone. Let me go away. No, just leave me in peace. Huh? Did you understand this now? The word is deep, huh? Huh? Very deep. Absolutely very powerful. He says, I must have my say. In other words, please allow me to say this. I must say this. Huh? He said, he's full of fire. My people is a church that is full of fire. They're bottled up with pressure. Full of new wine. They're new wine skins. They have not busted. So they must say to get some relief. Where? <laughs> so, pew, some relief. Huh? Did somebody hear me? Yes. They must say, you turn around in the, in the staff quarters, he's evangelizing. You come in the evening in the corridors of university, you hear his voice there. You know, that, is, that, that's, that must be Bishop Dr. Joro. Yes. Yeah. So you people, um, because when Paul, when Paul was persecuting Christians the way you are doing right now, <laughs> he's admonishing some, somebody. That's him. You know, he's full of pressure. He must say to get relief. Go and flush a bit first. He must relief. Flush up the tongue, my son. You see that? He must say. Because the breeze is coming from there, right? Pressure. You, you look, look, Bishop. Pressure. Down, he's looking down. Pressure. She's full of pressure. She wants to say it. Mupenda musipende. She must say it. <laughs> that is how to preach it. Hey, this message, you people. This message. I'm just tired. Mundo teacher, I told you, come, let us serve this God. Heaven is open here. I'm glad you are here now. From abroad, I prayed for him. Outside another country. Huh? He's saying, she must say it and say it now. <laughs> Do you understand the condition of this church? And, and, and when the Lord looks at her, when he looks at her, he says, look, she's saying, he say, she's saying, midday she's saying, in the morning she's saying, midnight saying, he say, they say, my people. He hears us, my people. Tell me somebody. Ever since you came to this fire. <laughs> understand this fire. <laughs> Ever since you came to this fire. And it is burning. I don't know whether you feel it. Me, I feel it. It is burning. It is burning and burning. Ever since you came to this fire, have you really said it? Are you really full of pressure, bottled up, bottled up with pressure, at a pasuka sayoyote, bottled up, which means you are looking for relief. I must find somebody and tell about Jesus. I don't know what I need to do today. I feel like today I must do something big. Huh? I want to do something that when people will hear it, huh, they will fear Jehovah. I must find somebody, whether he's a minister of government, and just lead him to the Lord. <laughs> something big. You understand? I feel like leading somebody significant to God. I'm full of pressure. You, you understand? You're telling them that. They say, what? Uh, sorry? You're full of pressure. You, you cannot tell about it. No, because, you know, I, I tell you, me, I remember, you know, you, know, you people, you are in good places. I remember some of the environments we worked in, these, are, these were very high security zones, you know. You, very, very top security. Everyone passworded, you enter there from Washington, they've seen who has entered. Your password, they know your password, you're the one who has entered, the cameras have shown them. You see, these are forensic aircraft accident investigations, this kind of stuff, right? 
when I was full of pressure. I <laughs> it was crazy, it was bad. It was very bad. You know, there you cannot say. You understand? Yeah, because people are living a different type sort of life, you know. They, they, they come in the morning. Morning, morning, they open the kiss power, the password, enter. Close the door. These are pathology stuff and so, so forth. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. Biological material for evidential purpose mm. in court. So, you, everybody's tight face. What another kind of world. Eh? But the fire had bottled me up. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, they nicknamed me. <laughs> Everybody seeing me, they ran away. They, they said, how are you? Well, they say, okay, I need to go. I need to get going. Okay. I need, I was doing something here. They knew me. He will hold you in the hallway. <laughs> you say, in the book of Jeremiah, you know one thing I love? When I go to church and the pastor begins to preach, there I find my joy. You know, he was talking everything and under, nonsense, everything under the sun. The Lord bought, when the Lord bottles you up, I want you to tell the church this. When the Lord bottles you up, you cannot be tied. <laughs> Even if they take you to jail, revival in jail. <laughs> when the Lord bottles you up, you will stop along the way in the traffic jam. You are like this. You know the head, eh? Full of fire. <laughs> now, someone, of course, another car is here. And then you look, say, I'm going to roll my window. <laughs> Jesus loves you. <laughs> you cannot be stopped. <laughs> no, I'm talking about me. It was bad. It was very bad. Actually, they thought I'd gone nuts, you know. <laughs> because they said he came when he was normal. <laughs> but now, he has lost it, you know. <laughs> it was so bad because at times, just close the door of the door, no, you come in the morning, then you enter the labs, the, patholo the forensic labs, you know. You find the, you know, they go very early. Yeah. Six in the morning, they're there. Maybe some crush has taken place that brought samples. But you come there, you find him there and stand with him. You say, this night I saw a dream. Eh? Uh, <laughs> you're trying to talk in a professional way, but you're giving him the word. Eh? Yeah. I saw a dream. Eh? It's the Ark of the Covenant. I saw it, you know. So he looked at me and said, hey, this guy. Is it all right here? <laughs> Very early, people are rushing to work. He has held me for one hour. <laughs> no, I used to enter inside to find them in the offices. <laughs> so I'm saying, even Dr. Njoro in the university, they, the vice chancellor said, I need to talk to you for a moment. I've received some complaints, and it's a good one. <laughs> it's good to lead them eh, to the Lord. You know, I believe also, <laughs> the vice chancellor. <laughs> but, um, you know, um, I think at this point, in this place, there's freedom of worship. Whatever. Uh, you know, the nonsense, right? Mm. Mm. And even if he tells you that, you will not stop. No. Mm. They will see in the night you are with students <laughs> worshiping the Lord <laughs> in another room. <laughs> I can't believe I want him to die in worshiping. <laughs> Gave them a lecture hall permanently. Hey, hey, hey. Knows. That, that hall is for worship in Jehovah. For prayers every, six every day, and they have cashers there. And the and vice chancellor said, key. It's okay now. They have accepted. <laughs> I told you, bottled up. Because my son here, when he was bottled up, eh, he went before the generals, you know, with excess. Eh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not really generals, the, 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 the police one, the commandant. Eh? The big panel now, panel. You yeah, know, panel sit like this. And they sit like this. Eh? They put the heart in the knee. They push in the, in the knee. Eh? And now they sit now, much of very strong military people. You understand the administration police. Eh? And they say, you know, of course, now they called him. Eh? He came, sir. <laughs> so he stood there. Can you now say what you are saying out there? Yes, sir. I'm saying I want to leave police. <laughs> <laughs> then they say, Huh? 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 Huh?
this. And then they asked, one of the big ones asked, how do you know when the Lord is calling you? What the answer he gave. <laughs> he said, those who walk with him know when he calls them. <laughs> <laughs> That's when they said, Kicho Ameruka, we watch we are in there. <laughs> that those who walk in that way, they know when he calls them. Allah, we want to scare the Saudis He was bottled up with pressure, going to the hall. Nyayo, Nyayo House, eh? Nyayo House. He went and then he went to the office of the president now when Nyayo House did not respond. And he reached the gate, he found the guys with arms, eh? Guns, big guns now. They asked him, Nini. No, no, you know? And then the same Mimi Nataka ni one commander. He said, Allah, when in any Mimi ni sergeant. Was it sergeant? Yes. Sergeant Gitonga. Kutoka Machakos. Ah. Where we unataka kuona commandant. Now my inspector makuja up with your commandant. <laughs> but the pressure was too much. Do you know what he said? He said, if that's the case, call the inspector there so I tell him the same. And if you refuse, I want to leave the police force, allow me! <laughs> <laughs> he shouted at the door. And then they said, okay, okay, okay. He said, inspector, and then they asked him, what's your number? Because you'd, you'd hide your number. What's your number? 9384, what was he gave full number? <laughs> they said, oh, oh, now it's okay. Until they took him. Where? Bottled up. Where? Full of fire. Until they said, ah, 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 watch, I ended too. In fact, they first put two ranks. Eh? Full inspector three. Eh? They put full inspector with three. In the last two weeks, they put ranks because they thought that's the reason. Of course, that's part of the reason he was leaving. They had taken him to college, throw him out. Take it. You know, they put his name when he reached. I think they were looking for a bribe. So when he refused, so now, that humiliated him. Now they put ranks now. The last two weeks, he was walking with ranks, inspector now. And then they asked him, do you still want to go? He said, I must go. <laughs> <laughs> so this, you understand what he's talking about here? He said, I must have my say. The new one is bottled up in me. I need relief. I must say to release pressure. <laughs> oh, you people, leave me alone. Huh? <laughs> ah. And the same thing you find in the book of 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 2. You now see the new congregation. The new congregation plus his new priesthood. See you? And Haggai chapter 2. I can read a little bit. Hmm? Haggai chapter 2. We are still talking about the wine skin. Did somebody understand me here? Yes. This message is deep and long. For those who will write this, capture this, you'll preach series. People will be coming to church, seven sharp seated, catching their seats. You'll do that, eh? Janet said, I am the one who's going to preach it. <laughs> hmm? He said, bottled up. So today you understood the new wine skin? Yes. It's about being bottled up with pressure. And, and hence, must say. So the Lord is looking for those whom he can bottle up so they don't burst. Eh? They can retain the pressure, retain the pressure until they say it, you know. And when they say it, you can see the impact. Transformation, salvation, revival. University halls are locked and spared to the Lord now. Reserved. Yes. Eh? Hmm? And then people like Pastor Gadara will walk into court and say, My honor, I asked for adjournment today. Why so early? She used to be a very good lawyer, a strong lawyer. She, her arguments were very straight. When she begins, she, she, you, you, I like to write. When she starts, you just, she, she has very good points. You see that? Eh? The judges. These days, she, 10 o'clock, she wants adjournment. But she says she has some engagement to go to. Kumbe, she's running to Riverside. <laughs> <laughs> and if you only told the judge, <laughs> what serious crisis, right? She's bottled up. You can't hold her no more. Mm. Eh? And when the Lord looks at my people evangelizing Jesus 
they cannot be held. When they put him in jail, he is going to win all the prisoners to Christ's revival. They are worshiping all night. Huh? I remember it was too much for me until at times I could lock the door of my office and know people are walking in between there and just cry. You understand? I wept. Oh, I wept so deep. And then they knocked. They said, is everything, is everything all right? I said, no, it's just the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> when you're bottled up, nobody can understand you. Nobody will. Mm -hmm. Don't even try to convince because they will not. Mm. That's what he's saying here. Haggai chapter 2, somebody. Now he's saying bottled up and I'm asking you church ever since you came to this fire are you really bottled up with fire? I mean fire. You, you understand it? Huh? And you want to say it. You want to reveal it. You want to preach it. Evangelize. Stand on the mountain. Tall buildings. And say it. And say, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. On the top of the hills. Yeah, evangelize. Eh? Well, bottled up. Mudoni, I cannot tell you Mudoni's case. Hers is lunatic proper. When she became bottled up, <laughs> in fact, the clients, some of them met me in the streets. Senior people in this nation. They said, hey, what you did to her? <laughs> <laughs> when you enter the first thing, she will preach to you. Two hours. And tell you about the coming of the Messiah, all the scriptures, you go through everything, the rapture, how to prepare. And that time you are in a hurry. <laughs> uh, only, every corner of the street it was unbelievable but fire is good eh? fire. you now understand this thing yes. do you understand it now yes, yes this is what I'm talking about here yes. the fire, JJ when the fire caught him eh? it's <laughs> so he says Haggai chapter 2 verse 1 I mean verse 1 1 to 9 he says Again, I read, on the 20th, 21st day of the seventh month, the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai. Speak to Zerubbabel, son of Shittiel, governor of Judah, to Joshua, son of Zehozadak, the high priest, and to the remnant of the people hallelujah ask them who of you is left who saw this house in its former fire in its former glory hallelujah when he talks about the infilling now he says let us compare notes what it was and what it is and tell it to me you see that yeah. <clears throat> and he says how does it look to you now does it not seem to you like nothing but now be strong O Zerubbabel declares the Lord be strong uh. verse 6 this is what the Lord Almighty says. In a little while, I will once more shake the heavens and the earth, the sea and the dry land. Verse 7. I will shake all the nations and the desired of nations will come. And I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord Almighty. The silver again. Yeah, the, the silver is mine, and the gold is mine. Hallelujah! Declares the Lord Almighty. The glory of this present house will be greater 
than the glory of the former house, saith the Lord Almighty. And in this place, I will grant peace. He says, people, listen to me. Let me go slow on this. What is the Lord saying? He's talking about the now glory. The now glory. And if you understood well the infilling of the Holy Spirit, he's saying the latter glory, the latter anointing. Daniel said, at that time, at that time, in those days, until then, meaning now. He's talking about the latter glory. He's saying, my people, he's a church that is in the latter anointing. The latter power. The latter fire. Fuego. Church, ever since you came, ever since you entered this door, are you in the latter fire? And then he comes back and says, Precious people, I need to move on. Because now we have seen the characteristic. Nobody, nobody in this church can ever say, Oh, Pastor, me, I never heard. Me, I didn't see. Nobody. Because you have now heard. Number one, the book. The name must be written in the book. Number two, as we set out to discover the book, we found that the dwelling of God is among them, my people. Number three, we found that, look, red flag, sexual sin, no more. What does it take for the Lord to dwell? Sexual sin, red flag, no more. Number four, we found that purchased. Amen. Which means they know price tag. Calvary cross. Number five, Holy Ghost field. Number six, Honoring God with their being. I'm, I'm reading in another different order. Don't try to follow me with your notes. I'm reading in different order. I'm just reciting. But as we set out to find what does it take for the Holy Spirit to fill you. Now we find the new wine skin. The new wine. Bottled up full of fire. Have you heard me somebody? J. Kwanzia Leo. Kuna mutu atakosa kuingia binguni. You understand? Oh yes, you must bring them to the state of the affair, right? Yeah. Huh? And then the next thing is the book now. Can we take a break here? And this message, the title is My People. My People. Hmm? And I was talking about it, and the way I started talking about it is that... Uh, I said that even the giving of this message, the accent, the tone has to be different. You know? You remember? Yes. And I gave the example. So literally what I did was called coaching. You know? To coach you people on how to present the message of Jehovah. Because revival you have. The, 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 in the right place you are. Hmm? You are in the right place. In the right ministry. Where the, mess, the right message is being articulated, is being propelled, you know. Hmm? Where, where the church is being prepared. Then after that then, we have to sharpen you now. Yes. Yes, yeah, so when people come, even when they come to see you, when people come to see you, then, then they will say, oh, to, to visit the church. They say, even the message is right. Yes. Hmm? Yes. You understand? Yes. And it also came out of the fact that in this ministry, the, you, you people now went to Kivunja, who is the commission. That's the Kenyan commission. The National Commission for Integration and Cohesion. And you write there, what did you find? That the prophet of the Lord, they know. Yes. You understand? His message, they know. 
What he preaches, they know. What he stands for, they know. Hmm? And so the question then becomes, when people come into your churches, now on this side of the thing, you see, they know already the message of the servant of the Lord. That when you preach a message that spills over to the second week, third week, fourth week in the church, yes. that church becomes established. Yes. People rush at 7 a.m. in the morning to catch a seat. Yes. They want to know what next. So they come and they call people. You find it's full. Yes. You understand? Yes. But if you're giving this today, next week and you give that, ledger, ledger, then they say, mm, I don't know what he's teaching. Last weekend he was talking about the mouth, eh? the power of the tongue. This weekend now again, he's now talking. Anyway, he's helping us, but, but you know, you, you understand. Eh? You see, but when you teach a message, always have a message that's a Siri. And what I said is that when the worship takes place, you know, let me repeat it for those who are here because I need to get ready to this thing, you know. I said, when the worship has taken place, you know, and the keyboard, hallelujah, people are clapping, hallelujah. people, you know, the worship is ending. You know that, eh? That hour when the worship is ending in the house of the Lord, you know? I said, that is the time you step in, you step forward, you know? You say, and then you stand. I remember I stood here and I was doing like this, eh? To, to, to get the, it's as if the worship is delaying you. You understand? And then you say it. And the, uh, she's like, hey, that's what I did. Eh? <laughs> no, that's all right. That, it's good to do these things. Eh? Then I said, I said, that is the time now you come in. You see that? And you begin to pray. You say, while still standing. While still standing. Let us pray. Precious people, let us pray. And in the prayer, that's why they were talking about the prayer, you know. Said, My father. Precious Lord, these are your people. You know, <laughs> I don't know, whatever. You know, I'm just saying, you know, I don't know why I'm saying like that. Hmm? Lord, today we are gathered here to seek you and to look for your guidance. To find your help, Jehovah. That today in this house you may help us. You know, so they will begin to understand how you pray. You say, hey, there is a situation. You understand? Hmm? Yes, because the Lord will lead you. Put words in your mouth how to pray, right? The Holy Spirit will help you. But they even listen to the tone. The tone, how you have started, eh? At this place, Jehovah, we want you at this place to open our eyes today that what you are going to say here may sink in our hearts and transform our lives. Lord, we are beginning a journey today that you may walk with us. You may bring us into the kingdom of God. And in this message today, help these people, Lord. These people love you. Help them. They've come from where? where? You know, they're praying. Huh? <laughs> they, they understand. You know? They realize there's a crisis. You understand? It's important to present that to them. You can't just present, you know, Lord. Well, then it's mild, it's timid, it's dampened. You see that? And I said, from the manner of prayer alone, the words of the prayer, they can already understand what's going on. You see that? And then, I said, after the prayer, for those who are new who have just come here today, rather, after the prayer, you say, while still standing. And you know, this is the pulpit. You see that? And this is the high street. See you? For those who are not here, you see that? This is the pulpit. This is your high street, you know? And so that, but that prayer is being said where? In the high street. You are standing here. You are standing at the high street here. This is where you are saying the prayer from. And as you say the prayer here, the pulpit is here, and then and then and then you tell them, as you are still standing, you see the high street, huh? Yes. And you are walking to this side, you know. Hmm? You are walking to this side. You say, as you are still standing, precious people. Can you hear the accent, yes. the tone? And I'm not trying to make a different person from you, but I'm only saying that to assert gravity to the message of the Lord. We have the beautiful testimony from Bishop Margaret. Beautiful testimony, beautiful from everybody that did this. You see that? Hmm? Beautiful testimony, right? Yes. yes, that everybody that did this, you know. It's a precious people. You see, he's walking on the high street. Have you seen that? He was this side. He's now turning this side. You see that? Precious people, today I have a message. I want to begin a series here. And this is the message. This message here. This message is going to transform your life 
forever. You see, and they're still standing. Huh? So they're already envisaging. You, what you're creating is a great expectation in their hearts. You see that? Hmm? Hmm? So they begin to wonder, say, hey, of all the messages Bishop has preached or pastor has preached, he said that this is it. This one now. Huh? This message and the message I want to bring to you today is entitled my people. Precious people. Hmm? I found out when I looked at the Bible I found out you, 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 there's on the accent, the tone, eh? the voice. Eh? Hmm? And God will help you. Don't say, oh, how will, you know, don't say, how will I do that? Don't say such things, uh, Dr. Catherine. God will help you. The Lord is the one that, you, you are doing his work. Yes. Only the Lord can help you to do yes. this work. Yes. Hmm? And they say, precious people, I found out that when the Lord, you know, the Lord, you understand that? Eh? Yes. <laughs> understand the emphasis, eh? When the Lord, when he looks at the earth, eh, eh, he looks at the earth, humanity. Hmm? Did you understand the dramatization? Yes. The Lord from above looking. Eh? Did somebody get me there? Yes. yes. When he looks at the earth. Hmm? I know those who were here last week, I said, yes. You know, <laughs> but give the others a chance to walk with me also. Hmm? Hmm? I found out. You know that time people are still standing in the church. Yes. They, they, they are standing. They are like, hey. You know, I found. Uh, sorry? Uh, no, 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 not, not at all. Not at all. They will not say so. Because you have told them while still standing. Yes. They know that you have not forgotten. Yes. Hmm? He said, I found out that when the Lord, and you, you know you're looking this side, eh? and then this way, the Lord Jehovah, that when he looks at the earth, you, you're doing this, eh? Yeah, eh? He sees two types of people. Yes. He sees two types of people. When he looks at humanity, he sees those who are called my people and the others. Precious people. You, 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 now, now they have begun to understand, to catch a little bit, right? Precious people. And that's why today I said in this place, in this house, I want to begin a journey with you to find out you, you, you know now the voice, eh? Yes. To find out that in all our worship Huh? Did you? Huh? Did, someone didn't hear. You know, the ones who have come today may not understand. Eh? Let me explain. Eh? Hmm? Everything I say is very important. Yes. Because I said, you know, if, even the way of saying it. You see that? Hmm? I found out. That, and that's why I decided. Yes, that's part. And that's why I said, in this house, In our worship. Did you hear the space? Yes. The silence. The space. Eh? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we worship. We come very early. We come. Seven o'clock we come. We enter. You, did, did you understand what? You know those who have just come. Make sure you write everything. Because the, the others have written. They wrote. They wrote last week. You know. <laughs> hmm? Hmm? And we love to worship. And I'm saying, there's nothing wrong with it. You know? Hmm? You know, people are still standing. <laughs> Very early in the morning, we come arranging, arranging, ar he's now looking, uh, pointing around the pulpit. Arranging flowers, putting chairs, arranging, arranging. Did you hear that? Everybody write everything I say and record it on phones. Also. <laughs> and we walk in here. And we worship. But in that worship. Somebody tell me. In that worship. 
Huh? Born again. Huh? In that salvation. Huh? Huh? And serving the Lord. In that service. I want to know today. Are we really my people? Did you understand? Yes. And you know, I'm, 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 you know me, I heighten it. You see that? Mm -hmm. The Lord is helping me to heighten it. But you don't necessarily have to give it at that. You know, the Lord will help you. Hmm? Yes. You don't say, man of God, you are saying to give so much like that. My voice is small. You know, whatever. The Lord, at your level, it will come out. Yes. And that's why I decided that today, as a church, huh? you, know, huh? you know, you know, in the is in the high street. Mm -hmm. hmm? I'd rather even move this away. Mm -hmm. He's in the high street here. As a church, as a congregation, I want to find out when the Lord looks at us, does he see my people? You see that? Precious people. That is the message. That is the message I want to bring to you today. So please get seated before the presence of the Lord. <laughs> you understand? You understand? And that time, they sit down. And as they sit down now, then now, you see, now they have sat. Now you can almost see all of them. No? You see that? And then, that is the time now you come in. Precious people, still in the high street. You see that? Here, the pulpit is this side. You see that? Hmm? Precious people, I looked at the Bible. Hmm? And, 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 and I looked at the Bible. You know this side, huh? hmm? Hmm? And I found out that there is a group of people That the Lord calls my people. Andika, andika sana. Andika sana. Wewe mekuja hapa leo tu. Andika sana. Our, don't depend on this. Wali andika sana. Easy vitu nasema wali andika sana last week. Waka record out a DVD. Wewe andika sana. Ndiyo ni mkuita hapa. Ndiyo ni nkasema asikuja peke yako kuja na ye. Yes, andika sana. Mimi nnamaliza tu kazi yangu. Now they have sat, you know. Yes, sir. Precious people, my assignment here today, you understand, eh? Yes. <laughs> you understand, eh? Even the language, you make it rich for them, you know? Mm -hmm. My assignment here today is very simple. Is to ask a serious question. Mm -hmm. That in everything we have done as a church, our worship, our praise, salvation. Are we really God's people? In other words, when the Lord looks at us, does he see my people? You see that now? And, and, and you're walking the high street. Those who have, the new ones who have come. Hmm? You have not yet gone to the pulpit. You see? Precious people. Hmm? My people. I found out that this special group of people hmm? that the Lord calls my people that no matter what whatever happens to the earth You will hear him say, but my people. Huh? And you hear him say, but at that time, my people, everyone. You, uh, 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 you understand, precious people? Yeah. No, don't, don't make it too academic. Be with me, really, like we were last week, right? <laughs> don't be too tight. Just handle, just handle me this way, no? Hmm? And so that time, it's a teaching, really. I'm teach, uh, it's a coaching. And that time you're walking there, you're telling them that you found out that what, no matter what happened to the earth, or, uh, 
Yeah, nobody will own here, right? Yeah. We even have sodas, right? Mm. Yes, because that would be abuse, right? You see, now listen to this. You see? So the question is this. It's like when I, right now a message comes. Okay, let, let's talk about what happened at Fox. Eh? When the whole brick fell like a bomb. Though the Lord has shown me in the night, I'd woken up, I was trying to prepare things in prayer and so forth. Eh? The Lord said, everybody not, is, is not hurt. But it was not in my mind. When it happened, it shocked me also. Yeah, it was not in my mind, my mind that was going to happen now. But when the brick fell, like a bomb, like a bomb, bomb and a kapasua chuma, you see that? Yeah. It fell until I thought the whole building has collapsed. Listen to this. L li listen to what I said. And I say, I say it. When it fell, until I saw smoke, I thought it was a bomb actually, you know. Under the building at Fox. When it, 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 I've never heard of such an explosion. Never, never, ever. Never. When it fell until the building shook, Chumai Kapasuka. And some dust was now, is all I could see from my window, dust, you know. And I, this is what I said. And nobody has died. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> Did you understand that part? Yes. That is the same thing I'm explaining here. That no matter what happens, I found out. He says, but at that time, my people... Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you're telling them. No, you, don't, you don't give the story of this explosion. But I was just giving you for, to understand this. No? You understand? Yes. So you understand. Because I live there. I said, this and this place belongs to Pastor Mudoni. He said, and at that time, my people. You understand? <laughs> you understand? <laughs> so I knew nothing would happen. And we found that the girls were not sitting, were not sitting where they usually sit. In a crash yacht. Even to, you would have to use a spade to, cr to remove the body from the floor. That, that, that time they just had gone. Mm. And Juguna, someone came, Juguna was there. Someone came and said, Juguna, come and show me something this way. <coughs> and then it happened. He was right on the center. It was a large pit. Yeah. You can imagine. Na pavement, a So you can imagine the fall, the Almighty. But I found out that no matter what happens, it's as though the Lord says that when anything happens to the earth, but my people, that immediately sees my people, it's as though the Lord stands up from his seat. You're telling the church. You see that? Hmm? And that's why today, and you know, you're walking, eh? You're walking the high street. And that's why today, over here, no, no, no those who have come new, please focus on me. Even. I, want to, I want you to handle this issue like that. Hmm? You're doing like this. You, you can. You're turning this to say. And that's why today, over here, you're telling them, over here, it, it, it's going to be solved right here. <laughs> you understand? Yes. <laughs> hmm? Over here, my assignment is this. Today, to make you appreciate that there is a people. The Lord calls my people. And He loves them. He protects them. He blesses them. He fond of them. You, you, you see the three words. Love them, protect them, fond of them. It looks like, then he turns this way. Huh? Look, look. Those who, please, those who, don't rely on these ones who were here last week. You just focus me on me, the new people. Hmm? You see, he has turned this way. He has turned this way. The new people focus on me. He turns this way. Hmm? He said, love them, protect them, he's fond of them. Then he turns this way. Then does like this. Hmm? He said, huh? My people. You see that? Huh? He calls them my people. 
he relates to them differently. They touch his heart. Hmm? So today, I want to interrogate our salvation. I want to investigate our salvation. Are we really my people? You see that now? Yes, yes. And he's walking the high street, you know? Mm -hmm. He says, right away, you, you know, now you have the pulpit there, right? And you're in the high street. Right away, precious people. Without wasting much time, turn with me and you're climbing the stairs. If you are, those of you who have steps, eh? Hmm? You understand, eh? I, I know Mudoni said she only has one step. I said, that's enough. That's the